going to do some Christmas art this year. I'm going to do some different designs that I can use on my Christmas cards and send them to families and friends. And I thought I'd challenge myself and come up with some theme prompts. And I've come up with 12 of them and I'm going to pick one out at random and then do whatever the prompt says. I haven't thought too much about what I'm going to do, so each one is going to be a little bit of a surprise. And then I'm going to film them and uh, show them here on YouTube so that you can follow along if you'd like to. So I'm going to be working with some different media to mix it up and give myself a little bit of a creative challenge, including some things that I've not really used very much before, like these watercolour pencils that I've got. I've been working on some colour schemes because I'd like these to be, even though I'm working with different media, I'd like them to look cohesive. So I've been creating a little palette of bluey greens and greys and sagey greens and then some like brick red and peach as a kind of a pop colour and then trying to work out how to get that in each of the different media that I'm going to be using. Plus I've been doing a little bit of practicing of some Christmassy motifs. So some of the things I'm going to be using I'm a little bit more comfortable with and some things I'm less comfortable with and I wanted to do that to challenge myself to get myself out of my comfort zone. Uh, if you'd like to follow along then that would be fun. Um, I'm going to be posting the 12 themes that I'm using on my Instagram feed and I'll also put them on a post on YouTube as well but they're all pretty common Christmassy things like stars and holly and uh, things like that. So our first one is gift. Okay, let's do a nice Christmassy gift. So I decide that I'm going to use gouache. Gouache? gouache. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I've always said gouache but now I've heard lots of people say gouache and I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong so forgive me if I get it wrong. So I've had this set uh, for nearly a year now and it's come out a few times and I've practiced with it a little bit but this is the first kind of real project I've done with it. Um, I decide to work on the colour palette first and I use some Venetian red and indigo blue uh, along with some white and some permanent green and um, and create a little colour palette of kind of bluey greens, aqua colours going from very dark to very light and then a kind of a, a bright brick red as a pop and then just mix some white and a tiny little bit of yellow in with that uh, to create a peach colour. And I decide that seeing as I'm going out of my comfort zone and using a medium I'm not particularly comfortable with, I'm going to stick with a scheme that I know. So <laughs> I've drawn a grid, I love a grid, um, and I'm going to do one little present in each square of the grid. So to start with I'm just uh, creating some squares of, uh, of colour uh, so I'm, I'm drawing the square with kind of one colour quite solid but then I want a little bit of variation with them so I'm adding in either a lighter or a darker or a slightly different tone just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension and then blending those two colours together. So some of the squares are going to be dark, some of them are going to be light and I'm going to keep going until I've filled up my grid with squares. I'm using a flat brush here. Uh, because I think it'll help me to get some nice square corners but uh, you could do this with a round brush as well as long as it kind of goes to a nice point. So I'm trying not to repeat the same colour twice um, and so if I need to use something similar I'm going to mix up a slightly different tone of it by mixing in either more blue or more green or making it slightly lighter or slightly darker. And I'm trying to mix up the colours a little bit so that uh, so that the, there's an even spread across the page and it's kind of nicely balanced. 
with some kind of being more vibrant and others more muted. I'm not going to use my really bright red at this layer. I'm going to save that for a pop when I get to the detail level. So as I keep painting, I start getting a little bit more comfortable with the paint and how it flows and how much water to mix into it and, uh, and how to get the colours to blend nicely. Um, it becomes a little easier as I go along. And uh, that's just because I'm not particularly experienced with using these paints. Now I've moved to a slightly thinner round brush and I'm going to paint in some ribbons on each of the parcels. Uh, some of them with a coordinating colour and some of them with the opposite colour. Now the paints that I'm using are traditional gouache and they, uh, they do lift the colour underneath a little bit so the, the new wet paint kind of activates the, uh, the dry paint underneath and, uh, and it can lift a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, so it took me a little while to work out what, how to get the consistency right to stop that happening. So I had to go over this uh, first one that I did a couple of times just to make sure it was nice and opaque. And then some of my parcels are going to get uh, a kind of a bow on the top and then the other ones are going to get I don't know what you call those things those stick on ribbony things you get I had quite fun drawing those it's a bit like drawing a like a little flower and then I'm going to vary the size of the ribbons as well so some of them will be thinner and some of them will be thicker just to create again that variety across the page I really like doing this level of detail, but you can see, well, you might be able to see that some of my lines are a little bit wonky. My hand's not the steadiest at drawing these, but uh, I do think it gets better as it, as it goes along. And again, I'm trying to vary the colours and try and make sure that they're kind of evenly spaced and uh, try and bring out some of the uh, more muted tones with some brighter colours. a little bit hard to judge the colour in gouache because it dries a slightly different colour to how it goes down. And then this is the bit that I've been looking forward to and I can get lost in for ages. I got a new tiny little liner brush specifically for doing things like this and it's a really skinny long thin brush and it just allows you to put down really fine lines and uh, you can draw tiny little dots and patterns with it too. Now previously I might have done this and actually I was very tempted on this to get my Posca pen out or another white pen and do all the detail in that but no I really wanted to learn some better brush control so I wanted to do this all with the fine brush and just see how much fine detail I could get in there and how much control I could get with the brush, which is just slightly outside of my comfort zone.
then at the very end I decide I'm going to use my liner brush and add just a little bit more detail into the ribbons that I've put on the parcel. Uh, some of them I'm outlining just to try and get the lines looking a little more smoother and well defined. And other ones I'm going over again just with the fine line just to add a little bit of a highlight. And finally the holly needs some berries. So now I just need to take the tape off and use the eraser to make sure I get rid of any of those pencil lines. So thanks so much for watching today. I really hope that you've enjoyed that. If you do any work based on any of my videos, I love to see it. And you can always post it on Instagram and tag me at Lou Rachel Davis. If you liked the video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then please do subscribe. I'll be posting more of my Christmas themed art over the next few weeks, so do keep an eye out for that, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, bye!